So what's happening when we're angry or feel this need to defend ourselves or to push back? And um, if you think about it, you experience this all the time throughout the course of any day. Um, someone says something, or, or here's a good example. So let's say you had a fantastic weekend and, and you're sharing that story with a friend and you're telling that friend about the weekend that you had and how nice it was. And, and when you're done, the friend says something that to you doesn't even relate to the story you just told. Okay? And when they're done talking, you come back with something that's kind of negative to them. So now there's this, this little struggle going on. We, we don't even notice it. We think it's normal interaction. But if we step back and pause and look at it, um, there's things going on in the background that we can explore, uh, that we can look at. Another example, which might be a little bit easier to look at, would be um, anger. And I talk a lot about anger because it's an emotion that we feel very quickly. Um, and, and when I talk about anger, I'm not talking just about full-blown anger. Um, there's really no difference between a slight irritation and full-blown rage. In both instances, I'm experiencing anger. So rather than look at the full-blown rage, which might have a lot of other issues attached to it, let's stay with just a slight irritation, which brings with it this need to defend, this need to push back. Uh, Many of the teachings that are out there will tell us to look at the anger, to look at um, the resulting behavior. And that's beneficial. It has its place. I've talked about it in other videos. I write about it in some of the books that, I, that I've written. But there's another aspect of what's taking place. And that aspect is diminishment. And we don't spend a lot of time with the diminishment because it happens so fast. Okay? Um, let's go back to the story now that you're... You, just shared with your friend and your friend doesn't come back with a response that acknowledges your story as an example. Well, in a microsecond, you experience this sense of what I would call diminishment, this sense of deflation where, where your entire experience kind of goes, ah, oh. and it goes, ah, oh, for whatever reason, they didn't listen to me. They're not hearing me. I don't feel heard. I don't feel valued, whatever it might be. But it's that sense of diminishment that takes place and, and like I said, it only lasts a millisecond because it gets quickly covered up by the need to respond, the need to defend. Uh, you can see it everywhere. Uh, let's say if we're driving a car, okay, and driving along in the highway, everything's fine, and all of a sudden the person in front of us cuts us off. Well, there's a lot happening there. First of all, they didn't cut us off. They moved their two-ton vehicle into another lane in front of our two-ton vehicle. The brain says... The brain makes it about me. The brain says, they cut me off. Okay? That's the defense. And we always spend our time looking at that defense, at that reaction. Um, it can become very interesting to look at the millisecond before that defense surfaces. And the second before that defense surfaces is that sense of diminishment. I'm somehow diminished, or I believe a story that says I am somehow diminished, I'm somehow less than I was before that car moved in front of mine. Their movement of that car somehow in my mind made them superior to me in some way. I felt somehow less than, and, and I don't like that feeling. So that feeling only lasts again for a millisecond, and I quickly cover it up with, oh, that he just cut me off. There's the anger, there's the discomfort. Through the whole situation, I'm not peaceful. And if our goal is to experience the peace of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, then this is something to look at. And I've spoken in other videos, it's the looking. It's the looking at these behaviors. It's the looking at this ego thought system that I'm attached to that makes these things go away, that, that deflates them and shows me I have no value. They have no value. Okay? So if we take the driving in instance, after I'm done being angry at this car that moved in front of me, I'm not, I, I put it on to the person. I say I'm angry at the person. But really, I'm angry at the, the, the machine that moved in front of my machine, but I can't project my anger onto an inanimate object, so I, drive, I, I project it onto the person. All of that, see how I even got sucked into that. All of that is irrelevant. What's important is what's my experience. What's my experience during that interaction? And my experience is less than peaceful. 
and that less than peacefulness doesn't result from the person's action and it doesn't result from my reaction to that, my anger, my sense of rage, my justification, whatever it might be. It doesn't result from any of that. My less than peaceful experience results from that sense of diminishment that I experience in that fleeting second, right before I react. That's what we look at. That's what we can spend the time exploring. And it's as simple as just pausing and asking, what is it in me that feels diminished? Am I less than I was before this incident? And the answer is always no. I can't be less than what I am. If you like what you just watched, subscribe to this channel and visit my website at jamespatrickmcdonald.com for more subscription-related content.